first night of a four night at the hospital and it was not a great one it was not a great one I left a little later than i typically do never a fan of last minute admissions when you get an admission literally right before you're about to leave and they're like oh, you got to do the admission and i'm like what i was like we're leaving in like 15 minutes i was like Ugh. it was a rough night it was a rough night yesterday in any event this is basically the topic for discussion and i've talked about this for quite some time that originally it went from a year and people were like yeah it seems normal right well, well originally it was you just take these two or if you take from the j and j well you just need the one right and we're gonna we're gonna get back to normal and it was very obvious that that was not the case especially for me as a nurse the moment when you know when i was working at new york presbyterian in new york obviously in new york and you know people were like they offered you know the antibody tests and when they took down the antibody test when this came out right so when this came out people were going to the offices and were like look i already got antibodies i don't need i don't need this because i have antibodies right we're medical workers we understand the science and then the hospital stopped offering the antibody test and immediately i knew what was going on and so that's why i left because i started watching my colleagues and i started asking are you going to take it are you going to take it? and people were like yeah why not and once I started seeing every single, every single shift, every single shift, they would overhead page. We've got X amount of doses left. Who's going to get, who's going to get it? Then they started coming to the units and we're like, we're looking for people to get it. We've got two left. We got two left. We got three left. We got one left. Who's going to take it? Who's going to take it? And of course, there was quite a few people who were like, just skeptic and waiting for obvious reasons for obvious reasons many of us despite watching people die and when you work in healthcare you work as a nurse you're going to see people die especially if you work on a high acuity high acuity floor like i did you're going to see patients die it's just the reality because <clears throat> you're seeing the sickest of the sick and there's a good chance that they're going to die and that's just the reality of when you work in critical care and when you work in acute care you're seeing patients who are more likely highly susceptible, typically either very old and sick or individuals who have been in an accident and they've been in some sort of accident that requires surgery and they require more acute care. And so the risks of people losing their lives are higher. And so that is just a reality. But despite that, many healthcare workers were very skeptic about what was going on. Some people, of course, become very fearful and they believe the narrative and they're just like, hey, you know, they're thinking that the hospital has their best interest at heart. And typically, you're, if you're very young and you work in healthcare, you might be a little foolish and think that. Some of the older nurses realize that you're just another number and it's just, it's just business. And so you have to treat it that way. There's no benevolence. There's no benevolence to it. And so originally we went from, you know, there was a, this, right? Originally it was a year. You know, they, they, they were like, you take it and you'll be okay. And then they were like, I think you might need something in eight months. And then I was like, here we go. And then from eight months, right? Because if, if, if this was the narrative, right? If this was the story that they told you in the very beginning, right? In the very, very beginning when they're like, we've got, we've got the miracle cure, right? We've, and they just turned out to be snake oil. We've got the miracle cure. You take it and you're good to go, right? That was just, that was the narrative. And you see very quickly how many of the normies who believed that they just take this and we're going to go back, you know, everything's going to be good, right? This is your, your security blanket. And then people went from this to, they never said it was 100%, right? And people always, people always can catch it, right? And so the normies get the firmware update from their lefty handlers. And then it went from eight months to six months, as you can see in this article here, right? We went from eight months to six months. And this is, again, the frog in the water, 
right? They boil you slowly because if they would have told you that you're going to be taking this every two to three months, you would have been like, hell no. And most healthcare workers and more than obviously doctors would have been like, no, that's not how this works. That's not how it's ever worked. But this is why you have to be cautious at the very beginning because this is where you're at. And so moving forward, this is what you're seeing in the UK, right? This is what you're seeing. They're telling you, right? It loses power just like a battery and you need to get it recharged. And so they basically put you on a, sub a subscription fee to health, kind of like HIV patients, you know, HIV patients. Now, again, because they don't pay for the medications for the most part, it's subsidized by the government, but this was a good way to get people to extend their life, but you're taking these, you know, retrovirals for life. Otherwise, you get a common cold and you can end up in an ICU with pneumonia. And this is where you're going. This is the this is your future for many people who are ill prepared. And I've said and this is a, I see even people like Tim Pool had posted it that this is where they're going, right? We talked about Austria. Right, looking for employees to hunt down refusers. This is where you're going. They're going to be people who are going to see that money. They're going to see the paycheck and they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to do what I got to do. Even if that revolves around taking your rights away, even if it revolves around maybe taking your life away, it's going to come. I promise you. If you think that this isn't, there's a reason why they, you watch all these dystopian movies because when it all goes to shit, it all goes to shit. And so this is where you're at. If you're not preparing, I implore you to prepare. One of the most important things that you can prepare is by having community. Community and a large enough community will be able to save you from much of the negatives that go down. When in in reality, just in life, if you have enough people and if you have enough push, the ability to push back, well, it does make a difference. And for people who are like, things are going to go back to normal. And I've said this before that this is the plan. There is no plan B for people who are like, you know, that the current scariant is, the, the you know, they're saying it's like, you know, weak this is fantastic. They're like, this is how we get, you know, for all the herd, right? Everybody, everybody's going to get it. And the chances of losing your life is very small. And then Israel, the Israeli government purchased another 36 million. They've only got a population of 9 million and they already have a stockpile of 15. So of course, Dr. Eli David says, well, why are they ordering another 36 million doses? And there's a lot of countries that are doing this. This is not new. And then, of course, it goes on to say, it says nobody knows. It's a secret. The agreement with this company right here is sealed for 30 years. Because this is the plan. This is the plan. There is no other plan. They did not invest all of this money and all of this time to go back. And for people, it's an all or nothing. They're either you have enough ability to push back and then you've got to go your own way, right? Like, like MGTOW, right? Like MGTOW men, you've got to go your own way with your society. You might be able to eke it out one at a time, but if they send their foot soldiers over to your, wherever you're, wherever you're at, right? If they send their foot soldiers out there looking for you, like, oh, I think we've got one on the fringes. Let's go out there and see if we can make them part of the herd, right? Like, what is that? Like a Star Trek, um, resistance is futile. And you even see it in Australia. And again, don't be surprised, right? Australia cuts their, get your boost from five months to four down to three, according to the Minister of Health. And this is where you're at because this is the plan. There is no plan B for people who are thinking there is some semblance of this is about health for people who are still like holding on for dear life that this is about this is about health and this current scariant is fantastic because now we're all going to get it and we're all going to be okay and now we can move on 
right? It's like that last pleading for please do things the right way for a lot of people. This is where you're at. This is why you should be prepared. Whether you're thinking of I'm going to leave where I'm at and I'm going to go someplace else, you you still might have to take this. If you're in Australia, they're like, you're not let, they're not letting you out. Well, they're not letting you out. Places like in Canada, they're like, you can't even board a plane. You can't board a plane. You can't get on public transportation. So you got to have a car. They might not even let you cross the border. So you might be in a position where you have to take maybe at least one just so that you can get out to where you're going. And this is going to be the unfortunate reality for many. I think a lot of people are going to, you know, churn and chafe in their chair and be like, this isn't fair. This doesn't make sense. But they're still going to roll up their sleeve. And there are some people that are not. And you better have a plan. You better have a plan. They have a plan. Just like they have a plan, you better have a plan. And it better be a good one. And you better have people because they got people, right? They, they got people. They got people out there looking for you. And so just like they have people that are willing to do whatever it takes to survive, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to survive. It's always been that way. There is nothing new under the sun, like the Bible says. It has always been this way. When push comes to shove, there are always going to be people that are willing to do whatever it takes. And you're just watching the tail end of civilization and if this is what they if this is what they think that they got to do because of the welfare and because it's all going to implode then this is what they're going to do they're going to do what they got to do to ensure their survival they're going to do what they got to do to ensure that they have authority that they have power and so if it's every three months or if it's every two months and you're getting this five times and six times a year that's what we got to do they have no qualms about doing and putting stuff into your body and you have to think of it that way that from their standpoint if they're willing to go this far to say that this is how this is this is how we're going to control people right again it's not like the movies where you see people, you know, in a chain gang and they've got a link, they got a link between their necks, you know, and they're walking around bound. We're not there. Population is too big. Population is too big to control that way. So how do you do it? You do it mentally. It's much easier to control people mentally than it is to bind people, right? Just like the Matrix. It's much easier to bind people up here than it is to physically bind them. And sometimes you got to do a little of both. And for those that they got to go that route, certain places have said, you know what, we'll, we'll toss you in jail. If you don't do this, we're going to fine you. I think, what was it? Um, I think just recently Australia said for every three months, they're going to fine you $5,000. I believe. It was, I think it was every three months. I wasn't sure if it was every month or every three months. But this is the route that they got to go. Whatever it takes. Any sort of coercion if we got to fire you from your job and you can't feed your family so be it if we got to throw you in jail and if you got to lose your life so be it so you have to have a plan you have to have a plan and you have to have community because this is where you're at anyway i got to get ready for work thanks for listening and i'll check you next time